It's been a very hectic five days here in Bahrain, but before I leave, I thought I'd take you into the city centre to show you what it's like. I'm in the heart of Manama, which is the main city here in Bahrain. And I quite love this little arcade down here. Dates back some years, I'm sure. It's also very close to uh, the downtown Rotana where I've stayed. Some lovely shops, very colourful, enthusiastic traders. The area is full of these small streets. Lots of retail around. Busy at this time of night, which is just prior to sunset. And a real good buzz. And if you like gold jewellery, like a lot of Middle Eastern places, you'll find a plethora of retail outlets here that will gladly sate your appetite for gold. Of course, this is a Muslim country and there are plenty of mosques like this one behind me and there's a call to prayer happening at the other end of the street. But at all times, you have to be very careful because these streets are very narrow and these cars uh, will often bang you with their side mirror. I came to this place three years ago and it's some sort of sweet local delicacy. The gentleman behind the counter has just given me some of this stuff. It's uh, sweet. And I can tell it's sweet because it's all over the floor and I'm getting it stuck on my shoe, but let's have a crack. It's got some sort of nut in there and then a very viscous, like a hot jelly. I need to wipe my face. If you're looking for a great view of the city of Manama, head to the top of the downtown Rotana Hotel. There's a great bar up there and there are some spectacular views, especially if you go at dusk. Having eaten very poorly over the four days of the GP, I've decided to reward myself with a good meal and I'm heading over to the Ritz-Carlton to see what they've got on offer, which I believe uh, will be something substantial. Well, this is certainly regal, smells lovely. Just got to settle on a restaurant, so let's go and have a look, eh? Welcome to Plums. This is the steakhouse at the Ritz-Carlton, so I thought I'd try a steak and maybe a Southern Comfort if they've got one, but I've got to tell you, alcohol is very expensive in this country. Well, I save some money because I have no Southern Comfort. Yes? What? I'm going to review your restaurant. I know, but there you... Nearly a hiccup, I was asked not to video, and then I had a chat with the manager, Jan, who was lovely about it, and he's got some very nice shoes. He would definitely make it into shoes off the paddock. And uh, now I'm back here again to enjoy a steak. Well, good news on another front, they've found some Southern Comfort. I've ordered a double, because I deserve one, I haven't had a drink for a while, and I won't be having any drinks where I'm going next, because of course, you can't get a drink in Saudi. All right, so we've got a Savado homemade bread with some garlic and chili oil on it. So I would like you to enjoy it. So the bread was stunning. It's uh, very light in the middle and crispy on the outside and some great herb infused butter. Yeah, some foie gras. And then we have some yakitori we call it. It's basically cheese curl wrapped with beef and some avocado. I'd like you to enjoy it. Well that was stunning. What I love about restaurants like this is that there's a bit of theater involved. Like when the lobster bisque came out, there was a bit of a ceremony involved. Lobster bisque. Fantastic, and I live in a lobster fishing town, so I have access to lobster the whole year round, but I uh, don't think I could ever come up with a dish like that. That was a good steak, uh, a little bigger than I thought it would be. Mash was good, but I think the standout was probably the cream spinach. Well, that was a stunning meal. And what was the damage to my wallet? 241-ish US dollars, about 350 Aussie dollars. Was it worth it? Well, it was a lovely experience. And remember too that I pay for all of my meals, so what you're getting is an honest review. It's not tainted by any freebies. It's actually in a sort of desert platter for you from the chef's side. <laughs> well, having said I pay for everything, and so it's an honest review, the dessert platter is complimentary. But I'll taste it, and I'll still give you an honest review. Well, I tried everything on that platter, and I thought the little green ball was probably the best. Nicely presented great tastes and now a final drink before I head back to the Western pack tonight and then tomorrow it's off to Jeddah and I'm flying Gulf Air Ritz Carlton it's a quality property quite palatial and indeed you'll need some deep pockets but what an experience this is there are so many amazing places to eat here and the pool outside here well 
That is something special, that's huge. There's no doubt that would be a lovely place to spend a good number of hours. Anyway, that was a lovely meal. It was a great opportunity to look around one of the world's great hotels. Now it's back to the Western, which I'm not disappointed with, but it's nothing on par with this. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Goodbye. Today we're heading off with Gulf Air to Jeddah. Well, it's a 23-minute drive to the International Airport, and I've got to get fuel on the way, and it will be the cheapest fuel I will buy all year. So word of warning here, hardly any of these fuel stations take credit cards, certainly the ones I've been to. So this one, you have to have cash, or you have to go over to some machine over there and get the cash out. I just bought 28 litres of fuel for 4 BD, that's about 9 euros. In Europe, that would have been closer to 48 euros. This is Gulf Air's business and first class check-in. Very palatial and lovely service. I've checked in, now it's time to go through passport control, but I must say this is one of the best airports I've been to. It's serene, beautiful marble floors, very quiet at the moment, and it's quite advantageous to travel outside of the main Grand Prix travel days. And this information desk, which is airside, is where you get your tax refunds back. And for some reason, Bahrain is a great place to buy Rolexes. Not the hard to get stuff, but certainly stock is available both here at the Duty Free and also in the city. The Arab countries know how to do lounges. This one's big, high ceilings, an area that you can watch television in while reclining, food options, drink, and plenty of space. Well, today's Gulf Air flight is on an A321-231. That's the plane right out there in front of me. They're loading it now. And if this flight's anything like last year's flight, which I believe it is from a quick glance around here, there are lots of men, I imagine, going to Mecca because they're in their traditional dress. And those that haven't got that on now get changed in the plane as we get close to Jeddah, which I believe is a couple of hours drive from Mecca. And I, as an Australian non-Muslim, I'm not allowed to go to that particular city, which is a shame, I would like to have seen it, and I do have some time there to kill. Thank you very much, have a nice flight. Hello, sir. Hello. Thank you, sir. First seat over there. Thank you. Safely on board, and this is a really nice business class cabin. Eight business class seats, and they're very spacious. Straight up, we've been offered a, a drink, and there's only four people sitting in the eight seats in business today. And I've managed to get seat 1A. You can power your laptop and your phone via a USB table. Yes, there are headphones. Yes, there's a television screen in front of me. And this chair does recline a fair bit. The mechanism for the tray table is quite impressive. Doors are shut and I've just offered everyone a date. And here we go. One of the things that surprised me about this seat is how it reclines so far. It's, it's uh, very comfortable. Food-wise on this flight, we were served up uh, three little tiny sandwiches, which were okay. The dessert, no, certainly wouldn't eat that again. And because we're heading to Saudi, there is absolutely no alcohol available on this flight. Well, I've landed here in Jeddah and <laughs> there is no one in this airport. Just the people coming off my flight. Uh, welcome to the Saudi Arabia. Good to be here. Pierre Gasly here, just in front of me here, Nico Hulkenberg. Over on this side we have Oscar Piastri. Pretty good out in 35 minutes. I had to put four fingers of the left hand, then four of the right, and then both thumbs, and that didn't work, so we had to go to another counter. Uh, but F1 people do get a separate lane, which is pretty handy, so we jumped the queue, showed my visa, was waved through, picked my luggage up, and then straight through without having to show anything with regards to my camera kit. So now it's off to the hotel. I'm in Jeddah. Now I've got a 25 minute taxi ride to the Shangri La on the meter and in this air conditioned green cab. I 
gotta say, I've been looking forward to staying at this hotel for a heck of a long time since I saw it going up uh, at the very first race that I came to here in Saudi. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, that's a bed. And this is the bathroom, which as you can see is quite palatial and beautifully decorated. I've just done a workout in the gym and I've got one of the F1 driver's trainers training me over the phone to make sure I do the exercise. And my reward is a jacuzzi afterwards. And the gym here at the Shangri-La is quite special, but I love the wet areas here. There's this beautiful jacuzzi, which is nice and warm. There's also a steam room and a sauna. And it's right at the last corner of the track. And when you look outside here in the daytime, it's an okay view, but at night it's something special. And they've uh, given me a basket full of fruit, which is good, because I need to eat some healthy stuff. Well, good morning. I'm uh, having breakfast here at the Waterfront Restaurant, which is on the third level, and it's a lavish spread. Plenty on offer and a nice view out over the Corniche. Last night, though, I went to the Chinese restaurant, the Shang Palace, and on the ground floor, there's this very elegant cafe, coffee shop, which has magnificent three-story high ceilings. And with that said, I've now got to go out, so thank you for watching to the end. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't done so, and become a member for a whole host of extras. For all of my F1 images, you'll find them at ProStarPix.com for a wide range of merchandise, F1 photo books, wall art, and signed prints by drivers, including brand new prints from Oscar Piastri, head to KimElman.com, and for my best images live from track and all during the week, head to Instagram and search at Kim Illman. Thanks for watching, and stay passionate. see all of to see to see all of my F1